she was, you know, this cute little girl with bangs, big hazel eyes, pink ruffly shirt, and she was having trouble with the elementary bully on the playground. And so one day, she was done. She decided to take charge of her life, and she decided to be the CEO of her life. She didn't have to, she didn't have to handle this anymore, right? So, being strong and determined and trained to Taekwondo, she stood up, gave that kid her best right hook. See, I can't even do it as good as she can. Gave him a right hook, gave him a black eye, pushed his face in the snow, and walked away. And he never, ever bothered her again. <laughs> ever. Meanwhile, I don't condone violence, but this was years of, <laughs> years of frustration built up, right? And that moment showed me what type of legacy I was le leaving as a parent, as a wife, as a mother, as a woman in agriculture, in a small town. And I, I tell this story just because I never realized that it was possible to be that strong and to be that in control of your life. Um, when I moved to the farm, I was told that I was just a farm wife. What does that mean? <laughs> you're just a farm wife. You're just a mom. You're, and then I was just a stay-at-home mom. All of those things. I was just A. So after getting into therapy, I realized what using those words really did to my self-esteem. When we use the word just A, just in anything, we take away our value, we take away our confidence and our self-esteem, we limit our own potential. We can't even see what's a possibility for us, just like this. Even two years ago, if you told me that I would be here on the stage talking to this many people, I would have told you you were insane. I was just a farm wife. I can't do these kinds of things. But here I am, <laughs> and I'm honored. And it also makes us believe that our impact doesn't matter. We, we just think that what we do is just mundane. It's small. It's, it's just life. It's not extraordinary. It also creates limiting beliefs about ourselves, and it shifts our mindset into a place where we can't see our way out of it. All we can see is that one tiny reality, that one little bubble that we're in. That's all we can see. We can't make our way out of it. And then it creates a communication barrier. It, when we say that we're just in anything, we're saying that when we communicate, our voice doesn't matter. It's not as important as her voice, as his voice, but it really is. That's our basic human right. Every person's voice is important. But when we use these, that phrase, just, just a, just in anything, we are essentially gaslighting ourselves um, into believing that we're not enough. And on my farm, I really, and my farm and my life, I really believed that I was small, and it took some brave acts of courage to step into rooms of people who knew more than I did, who understood more about life than I did. I went to Annie's Project, which is an NDSU extension service, to help women on farms understand what what life was like and what things look like for different people. And being in that room with all those incredible women, I, it opened up an entire new world to me. And it gave me the confidence to start asking questions. It gave me, it put me 
in connection with the right people so that I could, I could learn and keep growing and figure out who to start talking to so that I could start changing the life on my farm. And I can't thank those women enough. I, I hope they know who they are <laughs> because they did change my life. So I want to talk about how, so getting into therapy and learning about how I was making myself small really brought me into believing what I believe about myself now. And it showed me how much I really do on my farm. And I think every farm wife in, in the world should really understand how powerful and wonderful they are. What if we started, instead of thinking that we were small, what if we decided that we were the CEOs of our own lives? What if we chose to show up for ourselves and for our family and for our farms the way that a CEO shows up for their job every day? Because this is what we are and we do this every single day without thinking about it. Every single day. I, in the last four years, I don't think there has been a day that has gone by where we did not talk about our farm. Not a single one. The farm consumes your entire life. And so many of us think that we need to be separate from our farm. We need to have a different job. We need to create a different identity. But that's just, just that phrase. That's what it's telling us. It's telling us that we have to be separate. It's telling us that we have to have some other identity in order to have value on the farm. But we don't. It is our value. Our value is the farm. We are the farm CEO. We are the greatest asset because we create the culture. So we're gonna go through. This is a list from the internet as to what a uh, corporate CEO does because that's that's my goal i want women and any woman in agriculture in any agri agriculture related field to come away with a better understanding of their unique their unique perspective on what they contribute to the farm so the ceo she sets a vision and strategy and i'm going to repeat myself a lot because we do this every day but we just don't take credit for it <laughs> because we're having these conversations at the kitchen table. We're working on all of these issues at the kitchen table, which I think that a brand new kitchen should be on the approved tax deduction list for all farm <laughs> families because everything that we do involves the kitchen table or the kitchen, kitchen table, whatever it is that you have. It all happens there. That's the center of our business, right? And that's where we set the vision. We set the vision, we set the tone. I mean, the way we talk to our farmer husband in the morning is how the rest of his day is gonna go, right? If we wake up and we're crabby with our farmer husband in the morning, and if we are not happy and positive, guess what? He's going to go to the farm and be cranky that day because we were mad and <laughs> we didn't have anything nice to say. <laughs> and we set the vision and tone for our entire families as well. It's not just the farm and the farm and the family on are, are not two separate things. They're the same in small towns and agriculture fields. We lead the executive team, just like we, we lead our husbands, and guide them into what type of day that they're having. We deliver parts out to the field. We talk to all the employees. We build them up. We thank them for their service, and we build them up in every way that we possibly can. We manage stakeholder relationships. I don't know about you, but I talk to everybody that we rent land from. I'm constantly having talks with them about conservation and how we want to enhance the land and how we can work together to build partnerships 
I mean, that happens every single day, and that happens with the vendors. I mean, who you sell your crop to, who, who you buy your seed from. That's happening every day. Financial management. I know this one is kind of split. I would say maybe 50-50. Um, I talked to some, some farm wives and they don't have anything to do with their financial management on the farm. And then I see some that they're managing multi-million dollar operations. And they think they're just a farm wife. <laughs> but they're doing just as much as corporate CEOs. Um, managing that type of operation is, there's a lot of moving pieces. And I don't feel that women give themselves enough credit for that. Drive innovation. This is one thing I think women really do well. We're the supporters of innovation. I mean, we, are, we create innovation as well as being the supporters of innovation. I know on my farm, I'm the supporter of the innovation. I am not the brightest bulb in the box and I'm okay with that, but I have a great emotional intelligence and I know how to support everyone and I know how to support their ideas. And, and you're not just su supporting innovation in your farm and creating efficiencies in your farm, you're also fostering those skills in the children that you raise. For four, my kids joined 4-H and I've never been in 4-H, so this was a whole new experience. And my son wanted to raise pigs. So I said, okay, let's, let's raise some pigs. So I went to the internet <laughs> and found what I needed. I found the food that I needed. I got all that, got their cage, um, or got the enclosure. Um, well, how are we going to pick them up? What are, what are we gonna do? The, inter the internet says, they'll fit in a dog crate. Okay, great, I have a dog crate. We can, we can make this work. So I took my Suburban down to go pick up some pigs. And that was the first time these people have ever loaded pigs into a Suburban. <laughs> and I found out five minutes into our drive why. Uh, <laughs> that was a core memory in all of our lives. <laughs> it was the smelliest, loudest ride of my life. But it was hilarious. I laughed the whole way home. We had the sunroof open, and it, it, was, it was January, so it was fairly cold. I think it was only 35. So we turned the heat off in the back. The pigs are squealing in the back. Sunroof is open, we have the heat on high on our face, and we got these pigs safely home. <laughs> and the reason I have my suburban is because you know it's planting season. There's no pickups to be had. You have your mom car, and that's it. So you make do with what you have. So I say farmwise foster innovation in all aspects of their life. <laughs> and creativity, that takes creativity and resilience to work through any type of problem. We ensure corporate governance. I mean, that's just a fancy way to say, follow the rules, everybody. Um, and farm wives do that every day. We, we guide, we lift everybody up with integrity and we show them the way, right? We gracefully walk through situations and make sure all the rules and regulations are followed. And that's just a part of daily life. Uh, we represent the company publicly. Hello, <laughs> that's what we're doing today. And I think that farm wives do this the absolute best. They're so good at being a part of every single community event, putting on, putting on a smile, making a hot dish, bringing in anything that you need, and always being there for everyone in their community. And when I say community, it, a farm wives community is the school, their kids, their kids as friends, the 4-H group, the extension service, it, it's everywhere. And it's not, and then, and then there's their employees. I mean, I know I say them last, but usually they're 
up there on the list. And we do that for everyone. Everyone gets included in the farm wives tribe, right? Everyone. They show, the farm, farm wives show everyone the same love and respect and integrity to everyone in their life. Oh, fostering company culture, that's kind of the same thing, right? We, I know on our farm, I created a human resource department because we all need avenues to communicate our needs, our wants, our dreams, and what we're looking for on the farm. And what the farm is not only giving you um, a paycheck, the farm is also fostering your, your need to be a part of a community. Because when you're part of a farm, you're part of a family. It doesn't matter what type of farm it is, a fam it's a family farm. You, you get put into that group. It fosters creativity in your, in your work. We encourage creativity. We, we want you to, to love your job and, and to find what you're best at so that we can create the best team possible. And being the human resource department, <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we do. I'm making tough decisions. I, here we are back at the kitchen table. <laughs> it doesn't matter what time of day, we're solving problems with our farmer. It's, it's a partnership. Farm wives are good at looking at things through the lens of observation because we're not in it necessarily. We're not in the nitty gritty. We're not in the daily struggle. We can step back and look at it from 10,000 feet. I mean, we're women, right? We have a unique social emotional intelligence and we're able to encourage and foster the communication that's needed to make those decisions and, how, and look at how it's gonna affect everything. What I want you to come away with from this talk is that if you are a woman in agriculture, I want you to know how important you are, that you are really the CEO of your life and that you should be showing up for yourself, number one, for your family and for your farm, the way that a CEO shows up to their life every single day. You are incredible. You are the magic that creates a legacy farm. And I am so honored to be, I would love to be a part of your tribe and walk alongside you as you, through your journey. So thank you.